Yeah, they been. So today we're out in um, Rock Point, Arizona, out in the middle of the res. And today we have a special guest who comes from my generation. Her name is uh, Tashina Littlebin. And she has gone back to her roots. Let's see how this episode goes. I think I just caught you just sitting here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tashina, how are you? How are you? Hi. Oh, yate. Yate. So, I don't want to interrupt you, but exactly what are you doing? I am weaving. I'm actually um, sitting outside my home right now, which is my, my childhood home that I just came back to about three years ago and I took up weaving again so I took about like a, a 20, 20 year break mm -hmm. and um, but prior to that I was weaving from when I was a young girl just watching my mom actually probably exactly where I'm sitting right now because I know she used to like to weave outside I am at Ashche Nishne Kinyaani Bashishin, Twadit Eni Dashiche Do at Ahi Dashinala. Now I'm trying to get my bearings straight. Where exactly geographically are we at? Uh, we are right now in, um, we call it White Springs or um, Halgaito in Navajo. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, this is from my Kenya Ani side, which is my dad, yeah. and he's Little Ben, so there's all the Little Bens in this area, and um, kind of stretches far to that side in that back corner there in the Mesa. Um, but yeah, this is where I grew up. This is where I was born. Well, not born, but I was born in Shiprock, but okay. I grew up here, um, and this is where I learned how to weave. So can you tell us about why you decided to come back home? Um, well, I was living in the city for about 20 years. Yeah. And um, I never really continued to practice any type of Navajo tradition. Yeah. While I was in the city, I think a lot of a lot of Navajos can agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that well, you, well, you know, out of sight, out of mind, you don't think about it. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, well, I lived a very beautiful life in the city. Um, I would say, like, a, a very successful life mm -hmm. in sales and traveling, doing a lot of traveling. I traveled to um, Spain and Germany. Mm -hmm. Just all from working in sales. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it just didn't seem fulfilling. Um, I didn't feel like I had like a, a goal or, um, you know, like a, a destination or something that I was working towards or yeah. maybe more like grounding was what I was searching for. So yeah. that's that's pretty much why I decided to come home because um, I, I just always knew that in the back of my head that this is where I came from. So, you know, all these answers that I was looking for, why not go back home and, you know, just like what you said earlier, just go back and search for those answers yourself because I didn't have um, the guidance growing up or grandparents to tell me stories or anything like that. So. That's why I decided to come home, and, and that's how I got back into weaving. And so pretty much everything I'm doing is 
I'm learning from scratch. I do have um, my mom help me also um, along the way. She kind of kick-started me, mm-hmm. and then from there I just ran with it, and um, I just took off with it, basically. Yeah. And I kind of went a little bit further than what she would have done with it, and, you know, she's very proud that now that I'm, she doesn't need, I don't need her guidance, and now I'm going a little bit further in processing my own yarn, um, you know, carding the wool, dyeing the yarn from natural herbs, and also even learning those herbs as well. So I think she's really proud that I've gotten this far. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much why I moved home, it was just to reconnect with culture and um, kind of redefine my identity and find out where I'm from yeah. and to find grounding and rooting. So that's interesting about the ingredients and <clears throat> with weaving. Have you, have you, um, is this your first time weaving when, when you came home after you felt that calling? Yeah, it's, I was weaving probably when I was seven all the way till 12. And then, um, after that I took a really long break and, okay. and then I left and moved yeah. to the city. And then after that was when, um, I decided to come home. Okay. And so after 20 years, and well, this is pretty much me um, weaving as an adult now and having a different perspective. All right, so. And I think appreciating it more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we, we all do as, as we grow up, especially when we kind of leave the village and then we eventually come home and right. some of us come home to educate some home, some of us come home to, uh, to get educated. How long did your mom do weaving? And you said mm. you went further than her. In what ways did you go further than her? Um, well, she she actually didn't really have also a lot of guidance when she was younger. Yeah. Um, her mom passed when she was, I think she was about 18 years old. So she didn't have also that, um, the guidance or the teaching to, in the traditional way, you know, she, actually grew up in a, a foster home. Okay. All right. So she was kind of self-taught in some way. Yeah. And, and learned off, and kind of based off of her knowledge and I'm sure, I'm sure probably some teachings she had. Yeah. Um, well, for her, weaving was more of, um, it was more of like um, income for her. Yeah. So to her, it was just like work, you know? And so I watched her sit there daily, every single day, working, working, working. So I think it it wasn't like a pleasant and joyful experience for her. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing that's different um, with both of our experiences. I'm, um, I think now I have more resources that she didn't have, you know, as far as like YouTube and the internet. (laughs) And so that's how I was able to go further and to learn a little bit more about, you know, the spiritual background behind it and also just how, how to do the carding, how to do the natural dyes, Mm -hmm. just all, all of those things. So I think that that's a little different from our experience. So I was able to um, to connect with other weavers on social media. Okay. So from there, you know, just like when we meet in person, you just have these tiny conversations about weaving. And I really do learn something every single time I meet another weaver. And how many local weavers in this area <clears throat> have you met or, or is there any? Um, well, when I, my family alone is the Little Ben family, yeah. and I have some aunties now that um, I think they've already put themselves out there and put themselves on the map, and they're they're well known for their weavings as well. Um, so I think in my family alone, I counted just about um, 20 weavers. 
And what what's the age range? Um, I would have to. I don't even know. I have cousins that are like in my age range. I'm 35, so yeah. I would say about 30s. Okay, 30s. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So. I don't recall growing up, let's say if I was 10 or even 20, that I heard 30 year olds weaving. Is, is this something that's pretty common? Um, no, actually, um, I think, well, from what I've been learning from the books that I've been reading is um, when back in the 1600s, when we first started weaving, it was mainly for, um, for clothing. Yeah. and you know to provide warmth and then from there it, it was more focused on blankets mm -hmm. and then from the blankets it got more commercialized and so it wasn't as focused on um, on clothing anymore mm -hmm. so during those times when it was focused on clothing and and the sa the saddle blankets and the chief blankets those were the times when there was at least one weaver in every household oh, okay. and now you don't find them as much and I think that's you know it's it's pretty sad so what are your thoughts on why it's hard to find is it because of uh, corporations general manufacturing or? um definitely manufacturing um just because now well what I'm using right now is commercial yarn so I didn't really have to put much effort into it as far as the yarn or the dyeing. Um, I just went to the store, to the trading post, and picked out these colors, and, um, and that's it. So what a lot of weavers did back in, I think it was maybe um, when it started to get more commercialized, they wanted to sell more and make more money. So then they cut out the time, basically. Okay. <coughs> so, and you're saying trading posts to buy supplies, is, is that still pretty common? I mean, across yeah. the reservation, mm -hmm. as far as buying supplies for weaving? Yes. Okay. That's pretty much what my mom has been doing the whole time that she's been weaving, is just using um, commercial yarn. Okay. And is, there, is there areas here you can show me where you picked up your, your dyes for your yarn? Yeah. Yeah, I can show you. All right, my feet fell asleep. <laughs> I know, my legs fall asleep sometimes <laughs> sitting there. You have to find a really good, comfortable spot. All right, so what do you use for padding when you sit down? Uh, you have to find the right cushion. <laughs> AKA sheep. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> that's not even enough. I just stack a bunch of pillows. You just no, you, yeah, you just have to find the right seating. Okay. So this is, what I used to call my my playground when I was a kid. Well, I have to say it's a very beautiful playground. So when I got back into weaving, that was also um, one thing that really resonated with me was when you go back into processing your own yarn, yeah. you get reconnected with land as well. Okay, so with the yarn, is there like a natural uh, material that you use for the yarn? Um, well, I, ha I don't have my own sheep. <laughs> That's one thing that I think when I'm a little bit older and I'm going to be dedicated to staying home every day, yeah. I can get sheep. But now I can't commit to that. Yeah. So I just get wool from friends and family that donate wool. Okay. So. I think the last time I found Navajo tea was out in the Hemis area. Really? Yeah. So it's like, do you find it's very hard to find? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I used to live up in Hemis about 11, 12 years ago. And I go on hikes and actually came across one. I was like, what? Yeah. I collected it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was nice. Well, around here, you really do have to do a lot of hiking. 
um, to find, you know, exactly what herbs you're looking for. I, we went on a, a hike yesterday and we found sumac berries. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Or chilchin. Chilchin. I haven't seen or heard that in a while. Well, actually, I have seen it, but I haven't, haven't yeah. ate it in a while. The, here we go. It's Some a pretty, um, yeah, this one can be used for yeah. dye as well. What is that one called? I think this one they call sot. I'm not sure exactly what the term is, but this is also used for medicinal use as well. Mm -hmm. There you go. So what is this one? So this would be, see, you would want this to bloom a little bit more. So this would be the tea. So once they're picked, then you dry them out, and, and then I can show you once it's um, brewed, and then you can make, um, you can use that for dye as well. Oh, okay. And cool. it comes to like a very light tan color. Oh, it's a very tan color when you mm -hmm. dye it and everything? Well, it's pretty. A little rot there. <clears throat> so how long does it take for you to process your dye before you start actually getting the colors that you want it and then applying it to the yarn? Um, my first piece <laughs> that I made was this year actually. Uh -huh. I, um, I made a, a friend that's a master weaver yeah. and I traveled all the way up to Minnesota and I, um, he donated all this wool to me and he gave me like brown I think I have like a pink one that was naturally dyed from mushrooms. Whoa. Yeah, I was wow. just like blown away when I saw his um, his studio and his shop, and he had looms that were from early 1700s. Really? Yeah, and then that's when I, you know, got to think, you know, it just the story of weaving doesn't just come from Navajos as well. It it's everywhere worldwide. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Somehow they're all, the stories are kind of connected. Yeah. Like, just like the story of Spider Woman, I'm noticing, I mean, like, comes from weaving and the spiders and their connection. And even in Greek mythology, mm -hmm. there is a spider connection to weaving as well. And um, they've been weavers for centuries, yeah. thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's, you know, pretty cool about weaving. And... Um, I think that's it as far as like the natural dyes. But if you want to go a little bit further down, then you can find more of the plants from where like the w the wash runs. Two hours later, I swear <laughs> the wash is here somewhere. <laughs> well, I can show you where I found the sumac berries. Yeah, oh, that's pretty. So like this is a time of the year where you um, May is when everything starts to bloom. So it's my favorite time of the year to come out because then you get introduced to new plants because plants that you don't ever see before, you know. Well, even when I was trying to come out here in January. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a snowstorm coming. Oh, that's cool. I'll be out here. <laughs> okay. That's where we at. Yeah. So this is um, sumac berries. There's not much on this one, but um, you can see how the... That you see right there. And if you pick one off, you can really smell. You can smell it. I think yeah. it's already. And of so, course, you got to open up the insides yeah. to smell it. And they're still kind of green. I think you have to wait till they're a little bit more... Right red. Yeah, right. That's so... It smells so good. I recognize that smell. Hmm. Once you get more intrigued into plants and you kind of look around and you get excited to see some that are bloomed that you've never seen before. Okay. I don't know. It's just calm out here. It's peaceful. Yeah. So I can spend a lot of time out here actually. <clears throat> so this one here is um, sagebrush. 
Also smells very good. So this is my playground. And there's a sheep all the way down there. I don't know if you can see them. Those are my Nolly's sheep. They're in the shadow area, right? Of the clouds? They're underneath the cloud coverage, not the clear area? They're just straight ahead. Can you see? I was like little white dots. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I see it. I see it. <laughs> there it is. It's yeah. right there on top. Yeah. The little hill there. And so this is where my grandparents herd sheep their whole lives. Oh, really? Yeah. So is there anybody who does sheep herding here anymore? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, my Nolly, my family. But not really like, like what multi do you mean day? Like by actually going out there? Yeah, like multi-day and yeah, all that. Yeah, no, not so much. They, they kind of just stay in this area uh -huh. and um, they come back in the evening. Oh, okay. Or if they get lost and someone goes out there yeah. to chase them back. With the four-wheeler. <laughs> 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 right. Well, again, you know, we're adapting, so. Yeah. It's, it's on my, it's on my to-do list. I want to one day have my own little flock. Oh, really? But more for the wool part. <laughs> <laughs> I need my yarn. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I want to have, like, good quality shoes. To have good quality yarn yeah and that's one thing that i've also learned just getting back into weaving it's just like a whole new world of mm. of fiber mm -hmm. it, oh, yeah really mm -hmm. and i i went to when i went to minnesota i did um i went to a hemp farm winona's hemp farm uh -huh. and i learned how to process the hemp plants to um fibers oh, okay to combine them with wool yeah. and, it, and it just creates a more longer lasting um, stronger thread oh wow mm -hmm. i have a son he's 16 uh -huh. so i try to get him to, to be active mm -hmm. every day so i tell him just to get out there and walk run explore um go get dirty go get lost so yeah. when he comes with us then he knows he has to pick up trash gotcha. <laughs> It's a good lesson. Kids <laughs> appreciate Tours. life. So, so I'm curious then. What what um? So you relocated. Where'd you relocate from? Um. Well, when I moved from here, I moved to Phoenix, and then I was living in Vegas. Yeah. For 15 years. Yeah. And that was where I was working in high-end jewelry and selling um, diamonds and. Okay. Basically everything non-native. <laughs> <laughs> so you, okay, so that's where you talk about your sales then. Yeah. And then you're in, you're in Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. When you're in Vegas, then actually, how many kids do you have? I have one. You have one kiddo. Mm -hmm. And he was out there with you too. Yes. And then you moved back. I believe it was during a pandemic. And he relocated here. How was his adjustment to everything? Mm, he loved it actually. I think it was kind of along the same lines as me. It was kind of like, you know, we we were appreciating just being in nature. Yeah. Because we didn't have that in Vegas. So we usually hike in that back area. Yeah. Closer to the, the cliffs actually. And we find crazy stuff. Like what? Um, just like crystals and things that you just, you're like kind of curious. And I'm not, you know, an anthropologist or archaeologist. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> or geologist. Yeah. Because even, again, the eastern side, we found a fossilized, looks like a shark tooth in the, oh, yeah. in the rocks. We've done some hiking um, across the highway, and we found dinosaur tracks. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Do 
Yeah, dinosaur tracks. Yeah. I don't know what kind of dinosaur. Don't ask me. You know, it's kind of yeah. cool to just come across it. And even petroglyphs. Oh, really? To come across petroglyphs is really cool around here, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, that's when I saw the petroglyphs, I think that was also another aha moment for me, too, mm. is like, okay, these people were buried here, you know? Yeah. Their spirits are still here. Do you, do you feel it when you're out weaving? Oh, yeah. Well, um, not necessarily when I am weaving. I mean, I do... I do feel more energy when I am weaving outside. Yeah. I almost go into more of like a medi meditation when I'm outside. Yeah. And then you just go to town. Nice. And I could just sit there and weave for hours without any distractions. Since you transitioned from Las Vegas to here, did you, was there a moment where you were one, like you kind of had any possible retract on your actions? This one, I didn't dye this myself, but it's natural dyed with mushrooms. Oh, that's one from Minnesota mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yeah, and this one was actually dyed by my Nolly. She just been, she had it in storage, so I figured I could turn it into something for her. So I just have this simmering for about a day, mm -hmm. just so I can get a deeper color. Mm -hmm. 